Now coming to the different type of ventilation, volume control ventilation or pressure control ventilation with tidal volume 10 ml per kg with 12 to 14 rate and pressure control 16 to 20 centimeter of H2O with 12 to 14 rate. This type of conventional method of ventilation leads to higher tidal volume delivery in pressure control and higher peak generation of higher peak air pressure in volume control ventilation. A couple of minutes of this type of conventional ventilation can lead to ventilator induced lung injury. We can call it as a VILI. Now, what is VILI? See, common when we discuss about the VILI, when we discuss about the physiology of the lung expansion, we are always thinking there is an alveolar collapse and expansion, expansion and collapse, expansion of collapse. But no, usually there is a expansion and collapse of the alveolar duct, not alveoli. Alveolar tend to retain its size and shape during normal breathing pattern. Look at this microscopic image. Here, this is the alveoli. In normal respirations, it tend to retain its size and shape during normal respiration. Now, what happens with the ventilator-induced lung injury? Suppose this is alveoli filled with 100% oxygen and this is a surfactant, red color representing the surfactant lining. When you deliver high tidal volume, unintentional delivery of high tidal volume, this alveoli get over distended. And we disturb the surfactant lining. So this surfactant can get lost into the airway. When it gets lost into the airway, gradually this alveoli collapses. So volume trauma now converted into the atelectric trauma. Now, when there is atelectric trauma or ventilator-induced lung injury, really, what is really we have discussed that thing. So really the injured alveoli they do not retain its size and shape during normal breathing pattern. What happens with the injured, injured alveoli? They tend to collapse and expand with the inspiration and expressions. As the collapse, so it's a cyclical opening and collapse. So this injured alveoli is not able to retain the gases after expirations, so it's not going to take part into the gases action, and that is how it compromises the gases exchange. By rest of the normal alveoli can take part into the gases exchange. And if you look at the microscopic image of the injured alveoli, there is a cyclical opening and closing of the alveoli. So it's opening and closing, opening and closing. This is cyclical opening and closing. It's a feature of injured alveoli. So, really means it's a mechanical hit to the lung. High tidal volume leads to volume trauma followed by atelectric trauma and which increases the local inflammatory reactions of the lung leads to biotrauma and finally consolidation and ARDS. So, conventional ventilatory strategy, there are high chances of development of VILI. Now, if you are ventilating, think that if you are ventilating a patient in ICU and if you are ventilating a patient in OR, what's the difference? In, in OR, you are ventilating in most of the time normal lung, while in ICU, you are ventilating a disease lung. That's the basic difference. And chances of injury Ventilator-induced lung injury is higher in normal lung compared to disease lung. And that's the reason we need to change our conventional practice of conventional ventilation to different type of specific protective ventilation. So we, if you want to prevent really, if you want to prevent ventilator-induced lung injury, that can only be possible by lung protective ventilation in OR. Low tidal volume delivery, high PIP, equal IE ratio ventilation. Now, 2015 data or guideline of ventilating a patient, obese patient, 
they are recommending equal ratio ventilations and 2019 consensus guideline are recommending the normal ratio ventilation means i ratio 1 is to 2 so what we should use should we use i ratio equal ratio ventilation or 1 is to 2 so i'll make it clear if you are using in obese patient use i ratio equal 1 is to 1 by using i ratio 1 is to 1 you are able to minimize the airway pressure you, you are able to decrease the airway pressure is of pressure and in a normal weight patient you should use 1 is to 2 i ratio because recent study however it has been conducted for a normal weighing patient they didn't find the incidence of uh, post operative pulmonary significant difference of for post operative pulmonary complications in group who has given i ratio 1 is to 2 versus who has given who were given i ratio 1 is to 1 so in thin limb normal weighing patient use i ratio 1 is to 1 but in obese use i ratio 1 is to 1 you can use whatever the mode of ventilation either volume control ventilation or pressure control ventilation but limit your airway pressure less than 30 volume control ventilation with pressure control ventilation with volume guarantee is a better mode and use low fio2 there are two method two concept of lung protective ventilation one open lung concept that we have discussed during the peep, uh, discussion during the peep keep the lung open from pre oxygenation during intraoral and during the activations by applying cpr from the pre induction phase pre oxygenation continue with the pin if during the intraoperative period and activate the patient over the sustained pressure means you are keeping the alveoli open throughout the process of anesthesia that is called open lung concept which has been described in 2015 driving pressure concept will discuss later so what should be the technique of lung protective strategy so if, so this is schematic representation of the lung the yellow color is representing the normal aeration in the lung brown color representing the atelectatic area and blue color is going to represent the over distended lung if you deliver high tidal volume with low pin is not going to prevent atelectasis but on the other end because of high tidal volume it over distended lung leads to ventilator induced lung injury so this strategy is not going to work for you it should be as per predicted body weight now what is predicted body weight yes so predicted body weight can be easily calculated by this formula for males is a 50 plus 0.91 into centimeter of height minus 152.4 for easy calculation we'll keep this 150 so those who are using ideal body weight suppose is a 200 kg weight or 250 what should be the tidal volume as per ideal body weight we we'll consider 200 kg 200 into 6 1200 how many of you are using 1200 This is a wrong thing. It should be as per the predicted body weight. So, and this formula is depend on the patient height, not the ideal body weight. Suppose if you take a patient of six feet height, and six feet height is the upper limit of uh, height in Indian population. So, one eighty centimeter of height. And we will consider this as a 150. So 180 minus 150 comes to 30, and 0.9 into 30 comes to 27. So that comes to 50 plus 27 means 77. So predicted body weight is 77 into 6. So and if consider that patient of 6 feet high is having 200 kg body weight, so then tidal volume is 480 only. so think that 200 kg patient predicted body weight as per predicted body weight tidal volume is 6 ml per kg is 480 and most of us are 
tend to deliver higher tidal volume in always pressure. And lowest tide, and you consider mostly average lowest height in Indian population is 5 feet, that is 150 centimeter. So if we consider 50 plus 0.9 centimeter of height is 150, and we consider that this as a 150, so zero. So 50 plus 0.9 into zero means zero. So predicted body weight for a 150 centimeter height, whatever the weight it is either 70 kg, 80 kg, 90 kg, 110 kg, 120 kg. Predicted body weight is 50 and tidal volume is 300. So, if you are managing a patient of 5 feet height, your tidal volume should not go beyond 300. So, 6 ml per kg tidal volume is optimal tidal volume as per predicted body weight. Now, if you use low tidal volume, that 6 ml per kg predicted volume, body weight, that, not go, that is not going to prevent formation of atelectasis. So again, simple low tidal volume without P is not protective ventilation. This leads to higher atelectasis. So proper optimal strategy is low tidal volume with high P. So low tidal volume leads to even distribution of ventilation and IP prevents the formation of atelectasis. So that's the optimal method of ventilating a patient in a OR. Low tidal volume with IP. You can compare this is low tidal volume with IP. Look at the normal aeration. And this is the high tidal volume with low P. Look at the atelectatic area. So this is optimal technique of ventilating a patient in OR. So what is lung protective ventilation? It's a low tidal volume, 6 ml per kg, predicted volume weight, high PIP, equal ratio ventilation in obese, normal ratio ventilation in thinned in patient. You can use whatever the mode you want to use. Keep FIO2 lowest possible, but above 30, and limit the air pressure less than 30. So, you have discussed about the lung protective ventilation. The second concept of protective ventilation is a driving pressure concept. What is driving pressure? It's a plate to pressure minus P. So, if your plate to pressure is 23 and if you are applying 10 P, then P plate to is 23 minus 10, so driving pressure is 13. The normal driving force or driving pressure should be 13 or less than 13. That is a normal driving force. So if you are ventilating a patient with the driving force 13 or less than 13, that is lung protective ventilation. What happens? So look at this alveoli. It's been ventilated with the plate of 18 and P45 means driving pressure is 13. And this alveoli is being ventilated with the 30 plate 2 and P45 means drying pressure is more than 20. Now what happens during inspiration? If you deliver the driving pressure with the 13, this distend and driving pressure more than 20 leads to over distension. Again this leads to disruption of the surfactant and finally once during expiration, this collapses, this will return to its normal position with driving pressure of 13, but driving pressure more than 30 will gradually cause this collapse of the alveoli. So, during perioperative ventilation, if you are driving force exceeding 30, 30, that's the indication of recruitment. Once you recruit the lung, it will decrease the driving pressure increases the compliance of the lung. So look at, suppose you are using pressure control ventilation. The plate 2 is 22, PP is 10. The driving force is 22 minus 9 or 10, that is 12 to 13. This is plate 2, this is PIP. And if you are using pressure control, volume control ventilation, here plate 2 is 22, PIP is 31 and PP is 10. So in volume control ventilation, 
Plate 2 is 22 minus P, that is your driving force, that is 12 in this case. So this is plate 2 minus P and this one, this one is a peak pressure. So peak is 31, plate 2 is 22 and P is 10. So your driving force should be plate 2 minus P, that should be less than 30 or equal to 30. So fifth message of the session, your driving force is a plate 2 minus P. Normal driving force is 13 centimeter of H2 or less than that. In OBS, you can SF up to 20, but limit the airway pressure up to 30. And if your driving force exceeding more than 20, then allow permissible hypercapnia.